going to go deep in this conversation today. Well, it's really discussion, isn't it? It's really just me talking, isn't it? <laughs> you may know this about me or you may not, but I do like to get quite philosophical. All my life I've been a seeker. Maybe you have too. All my life I've been a question asker and I've been searching for truth of a sort. I remember being quite young and we went to church. I come from a, we, we grew, grew up in a Catholic family. We went to church a lot. And I remember being really hungry for God. I wanted that connection to the divine. But the adults were not very happy with me asking questions. I had questions about the way that the mass was presented in the church. And I was pretty frustrated that my questions were met with brush off answers. So I started looking elsewhere. I remember getting really into Buddhism when I was a teenager. I thought Buddhism was really fascinating. It started to answer more of the questions that I had. And I read lots of books. I was fascinated with India. And the more that I have studied and learnt and delved uh, into my own spiritual practices over the year, I'm still looking. At school, I had my first brushes with Taoism and we didn't study it a lot, but there was enough in there that I could draw parallels with some of the other paradigms and spiritual realms that I had looked into before. So my understanding is that Vedanta and Taoism and, you know, the work of Lao Tzu uh, and also the practice that I'm really interested in, which is A Course in Miracles, um, in their original and truest form, they are pure non-dualistic teachings. A pure non-dualistic teaching is one that recognizes the oneness of all things. And if the oneness of all things is absolute truth, then what I have taken to, to that to mean is that in this world of many things where I have a body, I'm looking at separate bodies, there are manifest things and objects, there's no real absolute truth to be found here in the manifest world, which is very, very difficult because Everybody wants to know what the truth is. People get really frustrated when they can't find the truth in something. And people can talk about something being their truth. You know, my truth is such and such. But if, you're, if, if you have two people that are both looking at something or that have a difference of opinion about something, none of them can be true. Neither of them can be 100% right because the fact that that thing can be argued means that there are different perspectives. So the perspective that you're looking from is the only one that you'll ever have. In A Course in Miracles, which is amazing, it's essentially, it's essentially the writings of Christ in, in their most purest form before the teachings and the writings of the Gospels were all you know, sort of edited and put together in the Bible and that's what the church has been built on. To me, the writings in A Course in Miracles is the most purest teaching that I've ever come across. But it essentially states that the only problem we ever have, the only conflict or grievance that we ever have that creates a feeling of not being peaceful is the idea of separation. Separation being uh, du dualism, right? So if you've got these pure non-dualistic teachings, dualism is where you've got two opposing forces. So in Taoism, we would call that the forces of yin and yang. Those two forces are basically the, 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 the primary foundation of why the manifest world exists. Because the manifest world wouldn't exist if there weren't polar opposites keeping it in place. You have to have these opposites balancing out each other. 
But in essence, once you've got that separation, you've got a whole myriad of potential problems. So if I believe that my truest identity is that I am a separate body, that I am separate from somebody else, that gives my ego a pretty great place to live. And you can't be a human living on the earth at this time without an ego. It's just, you, that's just part of the ride. <laughs> but I think our job is to undo that ego. But if I come back a step, if I believe that there's this separation and there is somebody separate to me and I'm over here in my separate identity with my ego, with my whole set of likes and dislikes, my preferences for things, um, my characteristics, all the things that make me special, there's a huge potential that I'm going to have conflict with this other separate being because they're not going to have the same preferences as me. They might have differences of opinion. And there's been plenty going on where the, the polarization of people's ideas and opinions has been like war. Because you have that possibility. In dualism, you have the possibility of war and conflict. Because the ego wants to protect itself by making you right. <laughs> and the other person wants to be right as well. So... How do we find truth in, a, in the polarity of yin and yang in this world? Well, I don't know if there is any truth, any absolute truth. For me, the absolute truth is that we're all one with God. And in theory, that's a beautiful concept. And I have fleeting moments in my heart where I really get that. But then the next moment I'm cold or I'm hungry or I'm irritated I'm tired and I'm pulled back, contracted back into my little self, into my ego, back to my senses, seeing with my eyes these different objects and different people. And it's this constant, it feels like, expanding and then contracting, expanding and then contracting. <laughs> and I think these great masters, Christ, Lao Tzu, Buddha, they, they had tapped into that. They had tapped into that realization. But what do we do? Well, we take their teachings and we try and create dogma around it and systems around it. And we try and make it fit the way that we see the world. Because at their core, they were trying to teach us that this is all actually an illusion. There is no absolute truth to be found here. And we search and we seek and we fight and we look for things in all the wrong places trying to find that feeling of absolute peace. So with all the seeking that I have done and all the many questions that I have asked and all the many different spiritual paradigms that I have dipped my toe into, what I have come to understand is that my role, my task, is to pay close attention to when my state of being peaceful is disturbed. It's usually disturbed by a thought. I don't know if it's ever disturbed by anything else because you're thinking about not being peaceful anymore. And that thought is likely to be a judgment about somebody else. If you really examine when you get knocked off your state of peacefulness, and I encourage you to do that, it'll be a judgment thought about someone else. Or that something has come in to uh, affect your environment and it's not what you want. I believe our task is to pay attention to those moments where your peace gets disturbed and really be present to whatever it is you think that it is that disturbed your peace of mind, actual or just a thought. And it is in that moment that our task is to kind of undo that or dissolve that or shift that, change our perspective, think about it a different way, absolve it and dissolve it in whichever way you want to do that until you return back to that state of peacefulness. 
I see that as being the way that you just gently shed off the layers of your ego. Just chipping away, chipping away. Not that it's bad to be angry or um, be out of sorts because those are definitely part of the journey. That's part of the human experience, but you've got to pay attention to that. You've got to pay attention to that because when you are um, tempted to make separation real, a grievance that you have with somebody or a judgment that you have against somebody has the potential for you to dig your feet in and create a cement-like story about that. And it might be a story that highlights some kind of victim perspective that you may have had about yourself. This happens or something that you've decided is true about this other person, your truth about this other person, but isn't necessarily absolutely true. And then there's a block, there's a blockage. Those blockages have the potential to become these bricks that then create a, a wall around you. A beautiful quote that I heard lately was the love that you withhold is the pain that you carry. As in when you are withholding love because you've decided someone doesn't deserve it, wasn't good enough for you or hurt you and you're protecting yourself and all, all the other stories that we weave for ourselves, because we all do this. I do this too. I've done this a lot. That's why I'm sharing this. You create pain for yourself. You create suffering for yourself. And then the more things that add into that story, the bigger the brick wall becomes. It's almost like a brick cylinder around me. And then year after year, we can get quite bitter or it can be much more difficult to let that wall down and express that love or share that love for fear of rejection or whatever the case may be. Seeking truth <laughs> within dualism is difficult. The one truth that I believe firmly in is that we all come from God. We're all still there. <laughs> We're just having a crazy, crazy nightmare. And one day or one moment, you're going to wake up in that oneness with the divine and you're going to smile back at all of this insanity <laughs> that you lived through. You might even laugh about just how real it felt and how caught up you got in it. So I guess this is just a gentle message today or a message of encouragement today to help you to stay present to when you get knocked off center and how you might be able to bring yourself back to that place of peacefulness and calm. And you're all gonna have different ways of doing that. We're all in this together.